We're not going to talk about not having very good sleep. It's the night before the 500 man and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling pretty chilled. I've done everything I can. Like right now, it's not about thinking what I could have done better or what I shouldn't have done or what I should have done. It's just about staying relaxed. I've done enough of these massive, big, crazy challenges to know that now it's just about enjoying the moment. You know, I've worked hard to get here. Several people have worked really hard for me to get here. And as my wife said to me this afternoon, this weekend is the fun part. And it is, it is the fun part. The training, the sacrifices you've made, hustling to get sponsorship and all the rest of it, that's, that's the hard part. Actually doing the 500 kilometers with a couple of close friends as my crew, I, I'm looking forward to it. Doing big challenges like this is never easy. There's so many things that can go wrong and there's so many things that can interrupt your positive attitude because you get stuck thinking about it. What you really need to do is focus on the things that you can control. And the things you can't control, you don't even give them a second thought. I have a lot of confidence in myself that I will complete these 500 kilometers over 30 odd hours because I've been consistent with all of my preparation. And for me to build confidence, it's about being consistent. It's about being prepared. And I've done as much preparation as I can for this. The swim's 10 kilometers. I've swam 25 kilometers before. So I know what swimming 10 kilometers is like. It's painful and it hurts, but I know what it's like. So I'm not going into uncharted territory before. I'm cycling 390 kilometers. I've cycled 412 non-stop before. So I know what 390 is like. And then I've got to run 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers is a long way, even when you're driving. But I know what that is like to run. So this is not something that I've just pulled out of my hat and thought, oh, I'm gonna give this a go. I've done the individual distances before, so I know what I'm getting myself into. This is a group of friends who are also professionals coming together on a project, a fun project, to inspire people, to encourage them to come and join us. And if we can show the world through a short film of what it's like to do a 500 kilometer triathlon I think we're good. and for others to come and join in. Whether someone on the other side of the world sees the film or someone who runs with me, cycles with me or comes out to the lake and swims with me and they get inspired to ask themselves the question, can I do more? Whether it's physically, mentally, in professional life. That's why we're all here. We're here for a bit of fun and we want to show the world what is capable. And I'm just a crazy man that's going to do it by uh, completing 500 kilometer triathlon. The 500 man. The reason why I'm doing the 500 man is not to prove anything to anyone. I, I don't need to do that. The reason why I'm doing this is to raise money for charity, first and foremost, the 401 Foundation. And secondly, it's because I wanted to make an event where people can come and join me, doing what I'm doing in the moment when I'm pushing myself. It's all about doing what I can do. And if something happens, an injury or whatever happens, this is sport. You know, it happens at the most elite level. I can't do anything about that. I've prepared the best that I can. And if I need to cut something short, that's fine. I don't have anything riding on this. I have people who have backed me and supported me and they will support whatever decision I make. I have no concerns that physically and mentally I'm not going to be able to complete the 500 man challenge. And if something else happens from left field that I don't see, then I'll deal with it. I'll make a call and move on, just like I've done in all my other challenges. No rush. <laughs> i got plenty of laps. 12 big laps and one small one. That's it, dude.
see on the other side. If I'm honest, the only real concern that I have is I haven't tested my shoulder to this distance swimming since I've had two shoulder surgeries. I don't know if it will last the distance. I believe it will because I've done six kilometer swims. It's not 10, but it's up there. And I've done 15 kilometer swimming weeks. Arms are heavy, but the spirits are high. I think. Oh, I've got four k's to go. And then a wee little bike ride. Yeah! Just a little one. Can I? I'll be very happy in four k's time. <laughs> Mate, I feel, I feel like I've got 20 kilo weight to my elbows. Those boys out there, they keep getting further apart. <laughs> Someone goes out there and moves them. I'm alright. My arms are really heavy there. But 9k's down. One to go. And uh, let's do this. Oh. Perfect. Done. Woo. Apparently, that was the easy part. Right now, it wasn't all that easy. Energy level's good. Spirits are good. Shoulders are sold. How are you, man? Nice. Good, bro. Looks fresh. <laughs> oh. That's definitely the hardest 10 k out of all of this. My initial thoughts for the swim, yeah, it went perfectly to plan now that I'm finished. Um, no, it was, it was what I expected. I'd be a little bit short on, on swim training, so my speed died off at the last sort of three and a bit k's. Shoulder was not too bad. Arms got pretty heavy at the end, so yeah, it was exactly what I expected. Food, 33 shake, chia energy gels, had three of them, worked a treat, all good. Trying to eat and go on the bike. Time's going. Let's do it. The weekend is here and it's going to be a sizzler. Temperatures even higher than they have been for many places over the last couple of days. Dark orange colours suggesting we could get to 32, maybe even 33. Could well be the hottest day of the year so far. As always, things don't always go to plan. The track is not working, but we will manage this. Got my man Ben. Hey. From What's all up? 500 man, he's the man. Big Pete Hicks over there. Let's go. Right. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks dude. Cycling, obviously there's other motorists on the road, there's other cyclists on the road. There's all these things that I can do my best to stay out of trouble. Um, physically, I'm in the best shape that I can be right now because what I haven't done doesn't matter. I 
can't do it from now until I start. So fitness wise, it is what it is. I've done as much as I can. Mentally, I'm ready, I'm prepared for this. Is everyone good? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Hungry. Come on, Finn. It's not a concern, it's just something that we have to be cautious of. This is going to be quite warm. It's going to be 27, 28, 29 degrees over the next two days. And I'm going to be out in it all day long, moving, cycling, running. So we just have to be smart about our hydration. And that's, that's really it, you know, we've, we've just got to really take care of that. And eat, drink, and be merry. A hundred and, I don't know, 60, 80 k's. The sun is absolutely draining us. Ice. <laughs> it's just used up a lot of energy. And we're just hanging on, oh, just hanging true. on. I'm trying to drink as much as I can and eat as much as I can, but at the same time, like, it's just making me sick. So there's no point bringing it back up. And it's just really, just gotta be really cautious of how much I actually put in my body because there's no point at coming back up. So, feeling a bit woozy, um, a bit nauseous, but good. So I'm just out here supporting and uh, yeah, trying to give him a wheel to follow. So it's, uh, yeah, it's good fun. It's cool. hot. It's really hot. I mean, the heat's coming right off of the tarmac, and it's, uh, it, yeah, you can feel it. Yeah, it feels like, even though it's pretty flat, it feels like I've been climbing a lot, um, even though we haven't been. It's just, just that draining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is hot out there. It's hot yeah, and relentless. <laughs> but there's nothing we can do about it, so. Just keep pushing through till it gets a bit cooler. Um, just hopefully soon. I don't feel great. I can't eat, I can't drink. I'm hot, I'm cold, I'm nauseous. Sorry, okay. It's just cycling all day in <coughs> extremely warm weather. I'm, I'm not really tired. I just want to throw up. I'm trying to, I just can't. And now I'm just really cold but my body's really hot. Which is why I have a dry robe on. And ice on my neck. Can I get back on the bike? No. Why? Not until you're stable. It's not safe for you and it's not safe for Tim. What makes me stable? Not wanting to throw up. Being able to string a sentence together that's clear. I've wanted to throw up for like three hours. Yeah, but we need to get you able to keep water down. I haven't thrown up, I've just wanted to. Yeah, but you can't keep anything down that you try to, so until you can. I've kept everything until down. Until you feel better, we stay put. <laughs> Thank you.
since we stopped at 20 k's ago, the last last pit stop. It's just been dry retching kind of the whole way. I'm really struggling on the bike. Um, I think the, the combined effort of the swim and then today's heat, I mean, it was over 33 degrees at some point and not a lot of wind and then just the heat coming back off the road. It was a real struggle for all of us. Hopefully he'll come back to life. We need him to get through this. If you want to actually complete this challenge, you need to think about the entire thing that's in front of you, not, you know, this next few minutes. It will just come up again. I'll get your mum on the phone. I like so new shake. Now we're all in this together. We just have a difference of opinion. These things happen. So we've decided as the crew that it's not safe for Luke to keep cycling. He's got a really bad heat stroke, has shivers, just isn't safe to be on the road and it's now nightfall and it, we just have to think of safety. So we're gonna put him in the car, chuck him back into the house, get him a couple of hours sleep and see what that does and hopefully his core temp can come down and we'll just monitor his stats and see that he'll be okay for the run. Keep posted and he's very unhappy, but that's what the crew's here for, to make good decisions. So the um, bike didn't go to plan, heat stroke apparently. Um, I chucked my toys out of the pram last night, um, but it is what it is. I'm not focusing on that anymore. I'm focusing on the now, and I've got 100 k's to run, and that's all I'm focusing on. I feel pretty rough. I'm absolutely roasting, and I'm just going to put one foot in front of the other and see where it gets me. So thanks for all the love. At makes a massive difference and hopefully I'll see all of you in Richmond Park later. We just, we just took a little bimble out to the bridge and then down the towpath. We started all right about the first hour into it, just steadily drinking water. Every now and then you start dry heaving a little bit and I thought, oh, it's probably going to be a long day. Got to a turnaround point and started coming back and it just kept getting worse and worse. Nothing was coming up, but then it, as soon as we got back here, it just went south very quickly. Just lay down on the floor and didn't get up again, pretty much. Yeah, it's just that's the way it is, isn't it? It's the way heat goes. Yeah, so he's he's awake, but in and out of sort of a doze, he's asleep. He is, but he can't take deep breath. Cool, and very hot, and then cold, and then hot, and then cold. Because we don't have any long term medical problems. Craziness. Craziness. <laughs> <Going to run. laughs> yeah. Right now, I just feel pretty crappy because I feel like I've let down a lot of people. It's just not a nice feeling. And I was looking forward to running with everyone and I'm really appreciative for everyone who was going to come out and just felt like I've let them down. <sighs> yeah, it's just not a nice feeling. It's just frustrating. And things don't go to plan. Yeah, so it's been five months since the 500 man and a lot has happened. I've learnt so much because I've, I've had to actually stop and think about why the challenge failed, in all honesty. I sort of felt that we didn't finish, and I say we because it was a team effort. It's only now, quite literally five months later, that I've gotten the all clear 
that my health is totally fine. The biggest thing that I learnt from the 500 man is when you put your trust into a team, exactly like I did, you have to respect that decision. I was suffering really badly on the bike. I still feel like I could have and definitely should have kept going on the bike to complete the, the bike leg and also the challenge. And my wife made a call and yeah, I was upset and I, as I said, chucked my toys out of the pram, just meaning that like I behaved maybe like a child for a period of, of time. My wife and I had a discussion afterwards, put emotions to the side and just went at it from an athlete and crew chief perspective. And we agreed to disagree. That was the end of the conversation. But five months later, I'm happy with what happened and being pulled out of the challenge. Superficially, it took a month to recover from the 500 man. For my soft tissues, for different systems in the body, from the heat stroke. Mentally, it was a different story. I suffered for probably a solid two months after the event. My depression was prevalent, although I tried to move past that and not let that interrupt my life. It was difficult. I did have some very dark days, days where I just shut off from the world. And now, with my depression, when I feel like that, I don't try and fight it. Whereas before, I used to try and run away from it. I used to try and punish myself for feeling this way. Now, I don't fight it. I acknowledge it. I let it in. I even talk to it and say, it's fine, I know you're here. I don't quite understand you, but let's try and work together. Yes, it was a failure on the surface, but I still gain some knowledge from it. So I think anything in life where you gain knowledge and you have experiences, it has to be a positive outcome. So I do forgive myself, for lack of a better phrase. It took a while, it took like a couple of months, but I gained so much knowledge out of it, had an amazing experience, and pulled actually a group of my friends together even closer. So would I do it again? Only if I see an opportunity in my training, only if I see an opportunity where I can try and pull people together again. But do I need to do it or do I feel like deep down in my, in my stomach that I have something to prove to myself or prove to others or tick a box? I have no interest in doing it again because I know I can do a 500 kilometer non-stop triathlon because I've done it before. The second question that everyone asks is, what's next? And I've got something fun that I want to do, but also it's, it's basically a, an adventure that I wanted to have. And I've never been to Ireland. So I thought, what better way to see Ireland than to run from the most southern point to the most northern point? So I'm going to run the length of Ireland. It's about 600 kilometers, and I'll do it in nine or 10 days, depending how I feel. And all I'm going to do is take a backpack, take a bit of food, take a sleeping bag, and run. The semi-predetermined route stop off at shops, get some food, get some water, find a tree to sleep under at night. Uh, so it's gonna be a fun adventure, self-supported, sharing it online, and really just enjoying the view because I've never been to Ireland. I just wanna say thanks to everyone who helped give us the opportunity to have this fun weekend, and everyone who was waiting at Richmond Park to run with me, even though there was people who didn't know one another, they still went for a run around the park together because they were all waiting for me. And the guys who came out and cycled with me on the bike, at the crew, and just everyone who supported me online, like I just cannot thank you enough. And just all the brands that helped me along the way and supported it as well. So it was a massive team effort. 500 men wasn't about me, it was this collective team effort. And as I said, it was, it was a team learning experience that was just very hot. Mm -hmm.